Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial video about Modular Colonization Systems mod or MKS for short. In the previous video we've taken a look at habitation and in today's video we will take a look at resource extraction and processing. MKS introduces a host of different resources and parts that allow you to mine them and process them into more uh, advanced resources and it's known for being very complicated. Today we will talk about how the system works in general without going too much into details about different types of production chains and if you have seen my previous videos you should be able to design base such as this one that will allow your kerbals to stay a significant time on the surface of a different body and also supply them with supplies for also quite a long time and this is a perfect opportunity to take out your drills and start mining something interesting from the surface. So let's take a look. First tier of resources that are introduced by MKS are extracted by drills and here I have a cupola module attached to a small carbitat for comparison purposes. MKS introduces three drill sizes for you to choose from with the smallest one from 100 line being just slightly larger than stock small drill then there is a medium sized drill from 500 line and the last one is absolutely enormous industrial strip miner, my favorite. <laughs> Another interesting thing about those drills is that they are not only about 10 times faster than stock drills and consume about 10 times as much electricity in the process, but also that the larger variants can mine multiple resources at the same time. So if we look at the medium 500 line drill, it has three bays and each can be configured to mine a separate resource, while the industrial strip miner has five bays, allowing you to either maximize your throughput or variety of resources mined from a single drill. Another interesting feature that MKS drills have is that they fall into two categories, automatic or manual. Automatic drills do not benefit from specialist bonus multiplier, meaning that presence of an experienced engineer or miner on board of your vessel is not going to affect drill sufficiency, while manual drills do benefit from specialist bonuses. Manual drills have exactly the same size as automatic ones and have slightly higher base throughput. You can discriminate between the two easily. Automatic ones have a letter A in their name, so the medium one is called 500A, while manual will have just 500 in their name. And since MKS has a very good logistics system, allowing you to send resources almost for free between different vessels, it's actually sometimes good to have an automated mining ship that has no crew on it that you don't have to worry about. This may be slightly less efficient than a crude one would be, but well, it requires only electricity to function and it sends you valuable resources from a very remote site. So automated drills are definitely an asset and you should definitely check them out. And since you can mine a lot of new things and then process them into even more new things, MKS also gives you a possibility to store all of that in all brand new configurable containers that come in different shapes, forms and sizes. All of for you to choose from and uh, it actually adds in my opinion a lot to creative freedom that you have when configuring your bases and vessels and um, some of those containers are inspired by real world uh, cargo holders, some are inspired by a little bit more futuristic looking NASA concept designs. All of them look great and I highly recommend you check them out. Next step is processing your raw resources into something more advanced. For that MKS gives you a bunch of new part types, crushers, smelters, sifters, material processing units, industrial refineries and agricultural support modules. So quite a lot. When first starting your base you will probably start with parts from Duna series and in this line only crushers, smelters and sifters are available. We will go into more details about the exact production chains in another video because it's quite complicated, but the rule of thumb here for this line is as follows. Crushers produce fertilizer from gypsum and minerals, while smelters produce relatively large number of industrial oriented materials from other raw resources. Last part type are sifters that convert the dirt into small quantities of all other resources from the process tier. It goes without saying that all MKS production plants require machinery in order to function and produce recyclables as they operate. Also parts that are marked as crushers or smelters can boost the efficiency of other parts, but we will cover that in detail a bit later in the video. 
Duna series of parts is designed to serve either as a temporary colony or as an initial colonization attempt before more advanced colonies can be established. It can still provide you with very long hub times for your kerbals, allows you to produce fertilizer and grow supplies in situ and make material kits for further base development. It will not allow you to make machinery nor colony supplies on the site however, so if you want to establish a truly self-sufficient colony, you will need to move to Tundra series of parts that have much higher throughput. Tundra series doesn't feature simple crushers and smelters anymore, but instead you will find material processing units, industrial refineries, agriculture support modules and assembly plants, and a few others. In Tundra series part roles can quickly become confusing, because some of them have overlapping capabilities and many can fit different roles, allowing for large number of potential combinations for your final production chain. So, for example, if you want to produce fertilizer, one of the first resources you will need to produce for any MKS colony, you can do that either in a material processing unit or in agricultural support module. But MPU can also produce some of the more advanced resources like silicon or metals or fill the role of stock ISRU, not to mention that it can also boost other production facilities while configured as smelter or crusher. You can produce fertilizer in agricultural support module as well, but it can also produce water, which is needed for efficient farming. Agricultural support module can also benefit from crushers in order to boost its efficiency and is not to be confused with agricultural module found in colonization tab, which is used for farming both supplies and organics. Industrial refinery is your main workhorse for producing large quantities of resources that are, well, industrial, so outside of farming. It can produce metals, silicon, refined exotics, chemicals and polymers and can benefit from MPUs configured as smelters. Final production plant is Tundra assembly plant. It can produce colony supplies, machinery, material kits and specialized parts from already processed resources. It benefits from parts configured as workshops, such as this 2.5 meter mobile workshop and is the final step in making your colony sustainable. There are also other more dedicated production plants, such as nuclear fuel plants that allows you to create enriched uranium from mined uranite, or recycling module that turns recyclables into something useful again, or industrial regolith sifter that works just like a regular sifter with much higher throughput. Those dedicated plants, however, have comparatively simple chains to understand and often do not overlap with other MKS parts. Another very interesting feature about MKS production plants that is also quite unique is boosting mechanism. Some parts can be configured as crushers, smelters, workshops or greenhouses and as such won't produce anything on their own, but they will boost the efficiency of other plants that can benefit from them. If we take as an example this industrial refinery that can benefit from smelters and add MPUs configured as smelters, they will boost refinery's efficiency. The exact formula for the efficiency at which MKS plant is operating is a product of a specialist bonus, number of base, machinery fill amount, planetary bonus, efficiency part bonus and production governor, so as you can see it's quite complicated. Each variable in this equation is calculated using its own formula and for those of you who are interested in exact numbers I'll leave the link in the description. In our case MPUs will provide an efficiency part bonus that is the sum of their boosting power plus one divided by industrial refinery consumption. So in our case the boost will be quite small, but if we added more MPUs and more powerful ones as well the boost could be quite significant. And the rule of thumb here is as follows. If you want to create a high throughput production chain, you would be probably better off by boosting one part with as many potential boosting parts, so be it crusher, smelters, greenhouses or workshops as possible, and more powerful at that as well. But if you just want to have a temporary or a relatively low throughput production chain, then maybe you would be better off with those parts producing desired resources directly. Obviously it all depends on your colony needs and uh, you might need to do some math or just figure out the hard way by doing experiments, but there is a potential for improving the existing colony efficiency as well just by adding efficiency parts. Which is actually good because it does not necessarily require you to completely redesign your colony, you can just improve on what you've built previously. To sum up, I thought it would be a good idea to visualize basic concepts of MKS production by aligning all the parts here in the VAB in order as they are used. 
We start with drills obviously, which allow extraction of resources such as gypsum, hydrates, substrate, metallic ore, minerals, rare metals, exotic minerals, silicates, uranites and dirt. Then we move to crushers, smelters and MPUs to process them into materials from the mid-tier such as metals and fertilizer. Next step involves using industrial refineries and agricultural support modules for further processing and the last step is done in the assembly plant where high-end goods are produced. So I hope that now when we have the basics covered we are ready to take a detailed look at the different production chains in the next video. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed and uh, you found that video useful. If you did, please consider liking it. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I would also like to thank Luke, Joe Laughlin, Sharax, Carl Roth and all my patrons on Patreon for their continuous support, which means a lot to me. My name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.